it's it's my pleasure to welcome you virtually uh, at our drone conference and expo here in Budapest. Uh, so the stage, the virtual stage, is yours. And could you start your presentation, please? Where are you at the moment, and uh, uh, which part of the world are you joining us from? Thank you very much, and the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is John Wan, and I am the research fellow over at Air Traffic Management Research Institute in Nyon Technological University inside Singapore. Uh, so I'm over at Singapore right now, and uh, our time zone is GMT plus eight. I'm here to uh, to present our uh, our the the research work that we're doing over here on behalf of our program director, Professor Logan Watt. Uh, for this presentation, I will give a brief overview of the uh, ATRMI under NTU. I will uh, go through a little bit about our research output over the few, past few years and uh, touch up on a little bit of the future work that we'll be doing, working on. So for a background of ATRMI, ATRMI was established back in 2013 with the, uh, by, by a joint CAS and NTU research as a joint research and experimental center. Uh, we are split in, into four programs. Program one is AI on, for air traffic management. Program two is our program, which is working on UTM. Program three is on regional ATM. And program four is on exploratory studies. Like, uh, so basically, uh, future technologies for uh, ATM. Some of the uh, facilities that we have in ATMRI include the uh, 360 degree tower simulator, a pseudo pilot simulator, a radar simulator, and an indoor Vicon capture facility for drone testing. So I'm going to start out with some of the work that we've done in the past few years. Uh, uh, so the first one I'm going to present is the non-cooperative US collision risk and severity uh, simulation that we've been doing. So for uh, this is uh, uh, for Singapore airspace, UTM airspace. Uh, so Singapore is a very small island, and we actually have more uh, more than five uh, aerodromes uh, with, uh, for this, uh, throughout the entire island. Two of those are for commercial aviation. So it's important for us to understand what the non, uh, what the risk posed by the non cooperative UAS operating near the airport. Uh, this uh, this uh, study was split into two parts. The first part is the collision probability evaluation, and the second part is the collision severity evaluation. For the collision probability evaluation of UAS, we are we basically uh, utilize uh, a risk analysis algorithm to determine how far away a drone can be spotted. Uh, that would pose a threat to an uh, to aircraft that's been uh, that's operating uh, in in their aerodrome. In this case, the Chang Airport. Uh, at the, that time, uh, on the uh, once we have the uh, once we did the collision risk simulation, we can move on to collision severity evaluation, and this is done using a, a, a finite element anal analysis simulation. Uh, dynamic simulation essentially in conjunction with CFD simulation uh, to come up with a uh, damage severity for uh, uh, criteria for the different damage that's being caused. The first part of the simulation is doing the collision severity simulation that, that crashes a drone into uh, uh, the fan blade, uh, the low pressure uh, compressor, and as well as the high comp pressure compressor of the jet engine. In this case, we're using the jet engine for A320 aircraft. And the, the drones that we've tested are some of the smaller drones, uh, but that's uh, smaller but commercially available drones. Uh, once we get the damage severity, we can, uh, we can import that data into the CFD modeling to figure out what the stress loss uh, as pre presented as the uh, difference in air, uh, air pressure. Uh, and once we get the, the drop in air pressure and stress, we can figure out what, like, how, how severe uh, uh, the collision is to the aircraft and whether uh, what kind of mitigation action would have to be taken afterward. 
we also look, uh, we have also done some work into uh, into uh, looking into the separation minima requirement for multi rotor UES. And for separation minima, in the general sense, we have to look into the wake separation and uh, the CNS and other factors uh, separation requirements. So for the first part, we're only look right now we're only looking at multi rotor under 100 kg. And we want to uh, we wish to categorize it by maximum takeoff weight, uh, as in the case for civil aviation. Um, for the CNS and other factors, uh, we are we are looking at uh, uh, it's it's going to be very similar to what the radar separation is for uh, for the civil aviation, but uh, essentially we'll be looking at the communication, navigation, and surveillance performance. Uh, for lower risk airspace to start out with. So basically we're, uh, we're going to be ignoring the impact of on CNS by buildings and other uh, as well. But eventually we want to look into communication and infrastructure impact on the performance of the CNS. Uh, so for wake separation, we are, uh, we're doing the, uh, the, the study using CFD again. Uh, for this one, we started out with near field simulation using RAN simulation, and then follow uh, and then map that uh, the weak field into the far field LES simulation. Uh, the final component of this simulation is the weak re encounter response, which is done in, using software in the loop simulation in Simulink. Uh, here are some of the visualizations from the, our simulation. Uh, unfortunately, the video doesn't work, uh, but uh, on the left, upper left-hand side, you can see the near-field simulation. Uh, on the left, lower left-hand side is the far-field LES simulation. And on the right, upper right-hand side, you can see the circulation decay, uh, which would inform uh, essentially how severe the weight vortex is. For, uh, for the CNS performance, we look into, uh, we, uh, look into the concept that that, was, that went into the required navigation performance in ATM. And uh, with, that, uh, with that in mind, our, uh, our separation minima evaluation actually involves uh, the measurement of uh, flight technical error. Uh, this is done by, by doing flight, performing flight tests ourselves. And some of the contribution team factors include human operator uh, uh, reaction as well as the flight, flight control re reaction. So, uh, other contributing factor include flight dynamics and inertia of the drones, as well as environmental factors that could include wind gusts or even urban microclimates. Uh, another part of the PBM budget that we have looking into is the navigation system error. Over here, we are uh, uh, on the right hand side, you can show, see some of the flight tests that we've done on NTU campus that involves fly, uh, flying the drone using GP, GPS as well as RTK to get the different uh, difference in G, uh, uh, positional uncertainties. Uh, the next part of our, uh, our work and the last part I'll be presenting is the expandable and optimizable airspace management concept. Uh, that's, uh, that's called the air matrix. The air matrix concept essentially discretized the entire air, uh, airspace as under management into uh, what we call air matrix blocks. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, all the, uh, all the blocks that intersect with uh, ground obstacles or buildings or uh, MRT tracks, for example, or, uh, well, MRT over here is the, the metro, uh, over elevated metro tracks over here. Uh, they, all, they will all be marked as red and that would that would let the controller know and the algorithm know that that those air block cannot be uh, assigned uh, to a flight operation. Uh, using that, we can also expand that to include risk-based flight planning by including the uh, the ground-based risk uh, associated with that geographical area uh, into the um, uh, into the uh, flight. Uh, Pass, uh, pass allocation algorithm. Uh, so uh, using the, this tool set, we will be able to uh, modeling the, the airspace that we want to have the UTM, uh, UTM operations in 
and use an algorithm to develop planning and pass finding allocation for conflict uh, conflict free operation at different flight levels. Uh, a lot of our the testing that we're doing are uh, using like on NTU campus, and uh, here are some of the uh, some of the operation system uh, drones and uh, equipment that we're using. Uh, we are currently we have nine licensed UA pilots in the team, and we'll, we're doing experiment validation and demonstration flight to support the program. Uh, for future works. So, uh, so future works, uh, we will be looking into evaluation of proposed TLOS for UA operation and to try to de de determine a relevant TLOS value for use or, or target level of safety value for use in the highly urbanized Singapore airspace. This is especially important over here because, uh, because uh, Singapore is such a densely populated uh, island that any operation that uh, any operation that that's being performed in near a population region, like uh, right. So any operation that involves the uh, the general population will involve uh, flying over uh, a very dense urban urbanized environment, uh, which means that we have to figure out what would be the target level of safety needed for the different UA operation to make sure that uh, nothing falls out of the sky. And if something is uh, is to crash, that it crashed in a manageable fashion. Uh, we're, right now, we're also looking into the investigation of the impact of urban microclimate on UTM operation. Uh, this is especially important uh, for given the urban canyon effect uh, between all the high rise over here in Singapore. Uh, we will also be looking into the investigation of UA navigation performance needed for urban airspace to avoid collision with static obstacles. So uh, as we all know, uh, the uh, GPS-based navigation system performance degrades as we go into the more densely built up area. So uh, we need to figure out what's the required navigation uh, performance in order to operate in, inside that area, as well as the different infrastructures that's needed in order to support operation inside the dense urban airspace. Uh, we also want to look into the adaptation of trajectory-based operation concept for UTM operation, as well as development of 3D trajectory assignment algorithm for optimization based on energy consumption, risk to ground traffic or population or overall operation delay and flight time. And I think I actually went a little bit faster than I was supposed to, but thank you. <laughs>